All right, so we're on location today, uh, working on a buddy's rogue glide that we've done before. I think uh, last time you guys saw his bike, we were doing uh, his slip-ons, and today oh, we were doing that on the heritage. Oh, we did. Oh, okay. So I don't think we've done anything on his rogue glide. So we're gonna do something on rogue glide today. You know, first another first for the channel. But uh, you can see we got his rogue glide here, and he's still rocking the stock headlight. So he went ahead and picked up the new, a new headlight from Hogwarts. We'll come right over here. And he's got what they're calling their silver tooth headlights, which are kind of cool. They're kind of like that, that off-road design that uh, is kind of the new hotness right now. So this should be far and away a big improvement over that guy. Well, it's so. not so much an, uh, an improvement, but uh, that one's got a problem. If you look, don't want to get you guys blinded by the light. So there's a the high beams, and I know there it is. You see it? The high beam cuts out. So that might just be a, a bulb issue, but instead of replacing a bulb, we're just you can't replace the bulb. Oh no! no. All right. So since we can't replace the bulb, we're just going to go ahead and replace the whole unit, and. This is still gonna cast way more uh, light and way more better light out on the road when he's making his journeys. So we're gonna start by taking the fairing off. He's got the four uh, Phillips head screws here. And then coming around, we're gonna pull up. Oh, let's get down here. A bolt on either side here. These are 3 16 He's already popped these loose, but you can pop those loose with uh, a plastic tool where you get behind and pop it or we can pull the fairing cap off and you just reach in with a finger and push but he did a little bit of homework ahead so that was helpful so we're going to pull the 5 16 we'll pull our uh, or, sorry 3 16 pull our allens and then we'll get to the inner cowl here where it just pulls up but i'll show you guys that once we get to that point so hold up while we start disassembly all right, windshield's off. I'm just going to show you how easy it is to pull this bad boy off. You just lift up on it, and it will pop out. You get a little bit of um, these yep. two humps there. They lock down into these two spots here. Yep. So don't be afraid to get a little froggy with it. You got it. You got to so. give it a little yank. All right. So, and then behind the speaker grill, if I can show you here. If you're seeing that, that's just a T25 Torx. T27. Yeah, I thought it was a, I'll be damned. I thought it was 25. So it's a 27 on both sides. These are, these are 20, 25s. Oh, okay. That's these what it was. Down. The 25s yeah, are here there, and here. And I know it's a little dark, but you're going to have that on both sides. And then the 3 16 like I said, over on the, the blinker. And then this should just kind of fall away. All right. Face off. So did almost forget that with the road glides, you've got the little uh, connectors here for your indicators that you do need to unplug before you take away the fairing. And definitely either have an extra set of hands or position yourself in front before, because unlike with the street glides, as soon as you have all the bolts free, they just wants to fall off. Yeah. This one you have to actually, the, the, the road glide, you actually have to, uh, you know, kind of give it a, a little pull. Mm -hmm. But once it's initially released, then it, it, it just psh, slides right off. Really quite simple. Now, another, as far as the headlight... Another reason why the street glides the evolved version. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, for, the, for the headlight, okay, we're going to have to take out uh, these two, and those. this one, and there's another one back behind the wire yeah, here. In the back there and I'll get you the sizes on those here in a sec but that's looking like another t27 here and if we're lucky that one back there will be another 3 16 if we're lucky okay and that's and not then, the way I work and we've got uh, this one here this one here this one and this one these these actually take this piece off yeah because okay. do we will we be reattaching these yes. to the new headlight yes okay I thought so all right, but these will come off with the headlight. So if we just pull these four, then we could essentially take these off on the, the workbench. Uh, actually, I'm not sure. Yeah. 
So, um, but I mean, we could either pull them now or pull them later. Yeah. You know, either way. Because well, you have to take them off. Anyway, yeah. Cause. So we're gonna go ahead and get the the light pulled out. Uh, I'm still kind of curious if we're gonna get lucky, and that's gonna be a three sixteenths. Oh, we got lucky. So yeah. three sixteenths, and I think a two twenty seven on the other part. So I don't know where your twenty seven got off to. Oh, uh, T25. No, T25. All right, so 225 on that. So we'll go ahead and get this out of here on the workbench and uh, kind of pick up where we left off. Fun discovery. This little bracket he just lifted out of the way is just pushed through the headlight with a couple of Christmas trees. So before we completely loosened the headlight, went ahead and popped that out. So he's working on the last bolt. And then the headlight should fall out, hence why I'm holding it. Just so nothing bad happens. And then we'll have to disconnect an electrical plug right behind it. So, we'll go ahead and, oh, there it goes. It's trying to fall. So, there it goes. Oh, we're, there we go. And there's our electrical plug where you just lift and separate. Yeah. The ladies out there should know what that's like. Yeah, there we go. Oh, caught the bolt. I did my job, I'm going home. There you go. All right. So now we have the backer plate here that should bolt into the original locations here and here on both sides using the uh, stock hardware. We'll probably hit that with some Loctite just so nothing vibrates out. But you can kind of get a see what's going on back here. So we'll get that backer plate installed, Loctited, and then the headlights here, which are already mounted up to a plate. Uh, should just go in and bolt in to the other locations on the plate. So, next up. All right, so we've made progress. I didn't get it earlier while we were putting it on, but the unit comes with a metal standoff right here that you need to pre-install with the bolt coming from the back forward. So that way, as you can see, it catches the top of the, the vent, the air intake here. So, we got everything settle in, he's running the bolts in, they all have the Loctite and a split washer, you know, just making sure nothing's coming loose, but it is fiddly, so you wanna make sure that the electrical that you plug into the bike, it comes into and it wise out to each headlight. And just be careful, because you gotta feed those wires through the back plate and not pinch it between the two plates, the plate, the yeah, the plate that the headlights are mounted to and then the plate that you already put on the bike because we were kind of struggling with that the plate was just not wanting to close up and i we weren't getting this standoff behind the vent so just take your time it's fiddly but once it not drops into place bad fiddly. no not just bad it's just wires yes you know get everything tucked and hidden and you know all of that but we're trucking along uh we're just ready almost ready to start putting everything back together the unit came with all the hardware that you need, you know, to set it together, as you would expect from, you know, Hogworks. So let's go ahead and we'll just keep buttoning it all up. It's just gonna be a reverse. <coughs> there is nowhere to mount this plate to with the new setup. So you'll have to figure out what, uh, what you wanna do. We still have to figure out how we're gonna do it, but I'm sure a zip tie will be involved somewhere, but whatever we figure out, I'll let you guys know. All right, so with that plate out of the way, you can see we just zip tied up to the main wire loom here just to get them all tucked in there nice and tight. So, like I said, now, I mean, that was that was our resolution. It should work, but we'll know for sure once we go to put the face back on it, you know, and then we'll still got to align the headlights. But now we're just going to do the reverse of what we did and check back with you guys when we got a face on and we're about ready to align headlights. All right, so we're out in the driveway. We've already got it aligned because we closed the garage, but we did back it up roughly 25 feet. I mean, we can only do so much because the driveway kind of dips down back there. So we're like 23, 24 feet. And uh, we followed the, the manual. I'm not going to tell you what the heights were because it was it, it's a, a bear. So, uh, but we think we have it pretty well aligned. I guess he'll find out when he goes and uh, rides it at night and if he gets flashed. Yeah. But let's go ahead and uh, kick it on, see if we can do this without blinding everyone. So there's the low beams. No, that's high beam. Oh, is that? No, that's low. Okay. There's your high beam. So, I mean, they, they look good. And they definitely cast some light in there. 
Let's go ahead and go down to low. Yep. So I dig them and I don't think it's gonna come through, but right here towards the bottom and then again, up along the top, it's like an amber the halo type thing going on. So they look good. You know, the only slight thing I f we found interesting about them was these upper three lights here. When your high beams are on, they do kind of get cut off a little bit with the fairing. I don't think that's going to cause an issue, but I'm sure he'll let me know if it does. But just word of the wise, if you're looking at the gold tooth or the silver tooth lights for your rogue light, this fairing does kind of come down a little bit and cuts off most of this top light. So I think we're going to go ahead and get it back in the garage and get our tools away and get it all buttoned up. All right, so bike's back in the garage. We're all wrapped up, getting the tools away. So I will put a link down in the description below to over at Hogworks where you can check this out. You know, the the, the gold teeth, the amber yellow ones aren't quite my flavor. Um, I'm sure that I know they are for some people and I'm sure there's an advantage to the amber ones that I'm not familiar with. So if you guys know the advantage to the the amber or yellow lens versus the clear lens, let me know because I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I just know from a aesthetic standpoint, I prefer the clear lenses or a smoked lens, but I obviously don't run smoked lenses on front lights. So, uh, like I said, questions, comments, concerns, let me know. You know, uh, I, I love, like I said, love talking to you guys. Uh, and we'll get the, this thing, this project's all wrapped up. So, you know. As all the other guys say, like, comment, and subscribe. So until then, we'll catch you all next time. Later.